The T-72 and Leopard 1 tanks are engineering marvels armed with brute force, possessing their own set of lethal abilities and potential flaws. These war machines have made their mark in combat history as two of the most formidable tanks to ever roll into battle. While the T-72 is favored for its agility and firepower, the Leopard 1 is renowned for its gun's accuracy and performance in tough environments. In this episode, we will compare the latest T-72 B3M variant against the Leopard 1A5 and determine can Russia's T-72 outgun the German's Leopard 1 tank? So, buckle up and get ready to experience the unrelenting firepower of these battlefield legends. Sign up now by hitting the subscribe button and stay updated with the newest and most amazing content. Built to operate in even the harshest environments, the T-72 is a true workhorse, ready to tackle any challenge that comes its way. Whether it's braving the heat of the desert, the cold of the Arctic, or the chaos of urban warfare, the T-72 tank is always up for the fight. First introduced in early 80s, the Soviet-era tank quickly became a workhorse of the Russian and several other armed forces worldwide. Over the years, 25,000 units of different variants have been produced. The latest variant of the tank, T-72B3M, is approximately 31 feet in length, 12 feet in width, and 7 feet in height. On the other hand, the Leopard 1 was first introduced in 1965 and was quickly recognized for its sensors, accurate gun, and crew protection capabilities. Over 4,700 units have been built for German and multiple NATO forces. Throughout its history, the Leopard 1 has undergone several upgrades and modifications, incorporating the latest technology and weaponry. The widely used latest variant of the tank is the Leopard 1A5, which is approximately 31 feet long, 11 feet wide, and 7.8 feet tall. The T-72 has a recognizable angular shape that is similar to many Soviet-era tanks. The low-profile turret positioned on the hull has a cylindrical shape with sloping sides. The main gun barrel extends from the front of the turret while the engine is installed at the rear of the hull. The T-72 tank is equipped with an automatic loading system, eliminating the need for a separate crew member. Typically, a loader must stand within the tank, which greatly impacts its height. The driver's cabin is located at the front of the hull, and the combat compartment is in the center. This impressive machine is operated by a trio of a driver, commander, and gunner. After Germany's unconditional surrender in May 1945, the Allies ensured that all military production facilities were dismantled, leaving the Germans to start from scratch in the design and construction of the Leopard tank. In 1963, Porsche's design was selected, featuring a compact and low-profile turret mounted on a long and slender hull. The turret is rounded and smooth, which helps to reduce its visual and thermal signature. The hull is made up of composite armor plates, protecting against kinetic energy penetrators and shaped charge warheads. The main gun of the Leopard 1 is mounted in the center, while the engine is located in the rear. The driver's compartment is located at the front of the hull, while the commander and gunner are stationed in the turret. This design of the Leopard 1 tank continues to be influential and is still in use by many militaries around the world. The T-72 tank is powered by a V-12 diesel engine, which delivers a power output of 1,130 horsepower. With a top speed of 47 miles per hour, this tank can quickly close the gap on enemy targets, delivering devastating firepower. The tank has an operational range of around 300 miles, which allows it to cover significant distances without needing to refuel. With a weight of around 49 tons, the T-72 has a power-to-weight ratio of around 23 horsepower per ton, providing it with a high level of responsiveness. In terms of mobility, the Leopard 1 is known for its excellent cross-country performance and longer range, making it well-suited for a variety of missions and environments. The tank is powered by a 10-cylinder multi-fuel engine, which delivers up to 830 horsepower. This allows the tank to reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour to cover a distance of around 373 miles before refueling. With a hefty weight of 47 tons, the Leopard 1 has a power-to-weight ratio of about 18 horsepower per ton. The T-72 tank packs a powerful punch, with a variety of weapons at its disposal to take on any target. The primary weapon of the T-72 is its 125mm smoothbore gun, which provides high levels of firepower. This gun is capable of firing a wide variety of ammunition. The autoload tray is equipped with 22 rounds, while 17 are stored in the hull. The gun is also capable to fire anti-tank guided missiles to hit a target from a distance of 4,400 yards. 
The T-72 is also armed with a 7.62mm machine gun to take on infantry and lighter armored targets, while a 12.7mm machine gun is perfect to engage aerial threats. On the other side, the German tank is armed with a 105mm rifle gun that packs a killer punch. The gun is loaded manually and can fire a variety of ammunition. This gun is famous for its accuracy and becomes more deadly with the addition of night vision fire control systems. The system uses computer algorithms and advanced sensors to calculate the trajectory of each shot, allowing the tank to fire with incredible accuracy in low visibility. The Germans estimated that the Leopard 1 could take on Soviet T-72 tanks at a distance of 900 yards with an armor-piercing round. The gun stabilization system allows the tank to fire effectively on the move. The tank has an ammunition carrying capacity of 55 rounds, with 13 stored in the turret and 42 in the hull. The Leopard 1 is also armed with two 7.62mm machine guns, one of which is mounted beside the primary cannon for shooting in a similar direction, and another machine gun is placed on the roof for anti-aircraft defense. The T-72 tank has armor protection made up of steel plates and is equipped with reactive armor to defend against a range of threats, including penetrators, explosives, and anti-tank missiles. The turret is built with cast steel armor, measuring up to 11 inches at its thickest. The front armor is approximately 3.15 inches thick, while the glacis armor is 8 inches thick. When the glacis is inclined, the total armor protection ranges from 20 to 24 inches. This sloping design increases its resistance to incoming rounds, while the reactive armor enhances the overall armor protection. The tank is also designed to protect against nuclear, biological, and chemical threats. The Leopard 1 armor thickness reaches a maximum of 2.75 inches and a minimum of 0.33 inches on the hull's top, while its turret armor on the front is 2 inches and rear is 2.4 inches. The turret's shields add an extra layer of 2.4 inches thick armor to the front. The tank can be equipped with additional armor-made composite material. The Leopard 1 has a relatively more advanced crew protection system, including an automatic fire suppression system, countermeasures, nuclear, biological, and chemical protection system. The T-72, on the other hand, has a simpler crew protection system, which may not provide as much protection in the event of a hit. Comparatively, the T-72 has been manufactured in large numbers and is slightly wider and shorter in height compared to the Leopard and has a low profile. Both tanks have undergone several upgrades and modifications over the years, incorporating the latest technology and weaponry. The T-72 has a high power output and top speed, which provides it with a higher level of mobility and responsiveness. The Leopard 1, on the other hand, has better fuel efficiency and can cover farther distances. The Russian tank is equipped with more firepower due to its bigger cannon, while Leopard's rifled gun is more accurate due to better night vision fire control system. The T-72 has better armor protection, whereas the Leopard is outfitted with excellent countermeasure system, sensors, and fire control system. Ultimately, the choice between the two tanks depends on various factors, such as mission requirements, operating conditions, and available resources. So, what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.